am Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. Today talking about how you can get your primary residence capital gains tax exclusion. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. Thanks so much for watching my video blog. Today we're talking about primary residence capital gains exclusions. Now I get a lot of questions about this on a regular basis, so I thought I would take a few minutes to talk about what does this mean. So first of all, in order to understand what capital gains is, first we have to understand the tax basis. So your tax basis is the cost of buying or building or improving a property. So assume that you're going to pay $500,000 for a property. You spend about $5,000 in closing costs and about $45,000 in home improvements. And so in that case, your tax basis is $550,000. So that's what it would cost you to buy and improve the property. Now let's assume that later on, you sell the property for $800,000. You incur about $50,000 in sales commissions, transfer taxes, and other sales expenses and then you subtract your $550,000 basis. Now, your capital gains then would be $200,000. Once you figure out your capital gain on a property, the next step is to calculate your taxes. For example, if you were in a $200,000 profit, you would likely owe $30,000 in capital gains because the capital gains tax rate right now is currently at 15%. But please, do check with your accountant and make sure that uh, you're getting proper tax and legal advice from your proper uh, professionals. So the primary residence exclusion, if the property is your primary residence, you have what's called a primary residence exclusion. This means that a certain portion of the capital gain is excluded from the tax. Married couples can exclude up to 500,000 and individuals or married couples filing a separate tax return can exclude $250,000 from gain uh, from tax. So in the example above, the entire $200,000 would be excluded from tax if this was your primary home. So this means you'd save at least $30,000 by using this exclusion. Now this is only valid for primary residences. This does not apply for a rental property, investment property, or vacation homes. So, and you have to have lived in the property for two full years out of the last five full years. There are some limitations and there are some exceptions. So you, again, wanna make sure you check with your accountant about that. Now, there are some extra calculations that can apply if you convert a rental property into a primary home. So if you rent out the house before you live there as your primary residence, the calculation of how much gain you can exclude is based on a percentage of the time that you've lived in the home as your primary residence. So for example, if you rent out the house for three years, but, and then you move in and you live in the house for the next three years, you can only exclude 50% of the gain. Now, this is because you didn't initially live in the property and you only lived there for 50% of the time that you owned it. This calculation must be performed even if you originally bought the house as a primary home but didn't live there until after you rented it out. However, if you rent out the house after you've lived in it as your primary home, you do not need to take that extra calculation. So you can take advantage of this exemption every two years. So if you've gotten a lot of gains in your home, it may be worth looking at see if it's worth moving now to be able to bump up your uh, tax basis. So if you have questions about any of this, it can be a complicated subject, or any other real estate questions, feel free to give me a call at 562-316-2915, or you can reach me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Please feel free to forward and share this with your friends, and thank you so much for watching.